Yeah. Awesome day. Rocks are on time. Everybody's here. It's almost too good to be true because ne <laughs> never ever does everything. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing today, Brian? We're upon this waterfall. And a little unique because the slope is moving away from the house. And something you know we always do is try to design it to be visible from the house. But let me show you how we're going to solve that problem. It all has to do with this guy right here. If we take this, if they get that spear out here, and I don't want to put it too close. This is a great window, yep. but if I put it too close, you lose the sight line from the deck over there. So I want to get that about right here. So if I can get that here, then they can still see something from their front porch, which is a pretty epic front porch. And then let this stream kind of twist and turn down the front side and give us a great looking waterfall. The reservoir goes here. We're doing nine blocks, which will give us just about 300 gallons of water. Of course, we're gonna sink it down a little bit lower, mm -hmm. which gives us more height for the waterfalls. I wanna pull it off of the driveway a little bit to leave some room for landscaping yep. this area. I really wanna focus with the waterfalls coming as close to the stairs as possible. Yep. You don't want it to follow the stairs all the way. If we don't leave room for plants, then the whole thing fails. So in certain areas, it'll come in contact with the stairs then move away. Aesthetically, and aesthetically fails. Aesthetically fails. Yeah. Well, what? It's Yep. Okay. Because this yard actually slopes more this way, and we need to go that way, all of this is going to have to get built up. Yep. So we'll take that dirt, put it here, the dirt that's in the back of the truck, and then anything else we can generate from the property. Love it. Boom. So we're totally on schedule. Whoa. <laughs> Hole is dug. One thing we're doing now is just thinking forward and digging out what's going to be more of the shape of the reservoir, not uh, the actual size of the reservoir. Let me show you what I'm talking about with that. This was the footprint of the aqua blocks right here. Of course, I don't want our finished product to look like a rectangle. The real estate I have from this area here to here, by the time I start putting some of these massive rocks over here in that space, it'll get really small. So we kind of think of the shape. If water were coming down there, maybe it's swinging out a little bit over here, then coming back. Chris is working on digging the pump vault right now. But of course, we want to put a rock right in front of that to help hide that space. We'll probably even get a rock out here too. Look at how much dirt we've generated to build all of this up over in this space. So that gives us that nice high elevation to get that sphere up a little bit higher. We'll have to speckle in some big boulders into here to retain some of that. It also allows us to now get that waterfall to come this way, which is what we want. We want it visible as they drive up this long driveway and see it there. I also think there's something psychological about stairs and uh, often people will just sit on their front stairs or sit on a stoop before even sitting on a bench or something. So we really want that waterfall visible from the stairs as they walk up towards the house. Our next step is for Chris and I to kind of come up with a landscape plan. They've asked if while we're out here, if we couldn't throw in a couple plants for them. So we're gonna see if we can't uh, get that all to happen by uh, the end of the day tomorrow. Tune in for more stuff. <laughs> All right, liner's in, hole is roughly shaped. We even have our first waterfall kind of dug out there. Looks like they've got it twisted a little. Hmm. <laughs> so we're pulling the whole thing out and what we'll probably end up doing, because we want to twist and turn this stream quite a bit, is actually cutting it right over here where Matt's at. That'll allow us to do an overlap and get a little bit more twist and turn with this stream. Nick's jumping down in the hole, pull this liner down towards us, get another sheet of fabric over the top of this before we put in our nine large aqua blocks. So moving right along, after that we start backfilling and we'll start setting some boulders. Yay! Hey guys. Just wait a second. So I just realized that we're getting gold over here and our viewers out there would really love to know. What did you just tell him? Be the water. Okay. Be the water. Explain it. So when we're filming this stuff, you have to think about where the water is going to go. We're going to have a really cool waterfall here. We've blocked it off on this side and we want it to come around off of this stone over mm -hmm. here. Right now there's a huge hole here. Huge hole here. And if I can get my hand underneath the rock, obviously water can get underneath that too. So we want to take that foam gun get it underneath all of this stuff, fill this in, 
get underneath this rack here. And then if you can see where this liner dips down here, right where the liner starts dipping down, I need to foam from here all the way in through here. Yep. And then over this, we've got this huge cavity. I just put foam over this. I'd have to foam all of this all the way back in through here. What would be easier is just to take foam over this area back to where the gravel meets the liner here. And then I put a piece of fabric over the top of it. I can come back in here, pull some of this out, and then do the bib liner. Be the water. <laughs> Go! <laughs> we are making huge, huge progress out here on this uh, Pondless waterfall. We got one, two, Basically three waterfalls built, the next one's gonna go up top behind Brian, and then the sphere. All waterfalls are kind of built the same, or like we have our style and all of ours are built the same. Water's eroded away the earth, leaving back behind the stones that couldn't move. So when we have a hillside like this, the idea is carve into that hillside, right? Don't try to build up when you don't need to. We had a nice slope to work with, so we wanted to work with that. So we came in here and we dug out a flat run. Notice though that the height of this is lower than my spill stone there. You're talking about these rocks yes. right here, which water will travel over. Which, yeah, so here they'll, it'll come around this little guy and then yep. it should come together right in here. Okay. I intentionally wanted to do that. So as water comes over this, yep. it looks like it's eroded this out. If this were shallow up in here, mm -hmm. the water would come hit dry gravel basically, yep. push all that gravel all over the place because it still wants to erode away everything and liner would be exposed all the time. It'll look a whole lot better to drop this down let that water swell up a little mm -hmm. bit before it goes over the other one. You know, I mean, that was one of the first things that you teach when building waterfalls is dig almost, almost back pitch the pooling area that the waterfall dumps into because that's what you would see in nature, right? See how far I've got this back in here too? Yep. This allows us, we always dig our waterfalls back on these big like U curves. This allows me to put whatever I want to back in here to hide that rubber liner. So I could put little cobbles, I could take a big piece of granite, Heck, you could even put a piece of slate back mm -hmm. in here and nobody would know it because it's so far back in there. And there's a big sheet of water coming over there. And you get a big sheet of water covering it. Big rack on one side, big rack on the other side, something in between. So here it's big rack, big rack, something in between, big rack, big rack, something in between. You say they're all built the same, but to create the different movement, why don't you talk about the, the angles to which you're facing the waterfalls, right? So you're not, it's not like a staircase look because I think that's a really common thing that maybe our viewers have. If you've got a hill like this, what you don't want to do is have, like often I'll get a homeowner that says, well, can we get the water to kind of go like this and then come back like this? Well, if there was a hill like this in nature, water would never say, I'm going to go 10 feet to the left before I come back over to here. It takes the path of least resistance and goes this way. But to give it some character, take those sheets and instead of them going drop, 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 mm -hmm. they should go drop, drop, drop. So left, right, left, right. Even though all the water's coming this way, yep. this stone on a 45 to this one yep. gives it some character. Even this stone that we're leaning on, where it shoots way out in front of here, is gonna cause that water, even though it's a straight run from here to the next spill stone, that water's gonna twist around this and then come back which gives it a lot of character. Yeah. Over dig the whole thing and let the boulders change the shape and then backfill to them. It gives you a lot more creative freedom. Transition. This is the start of day two for us. So you can see basically almost the entire waterfall has been built. We've got to come in with a bunch of dirt and retaining stones over here. We still have to put the sphere in, finish out this waterfalls. Nick over here, he's gonna hop in the machine. Oh, that was nice. Dude, what's that shimmy? I don't know what that is. <laughs> we'll get rock and rolling before the guys get here, getting this waterfall area done. So it'll give them stuff to work on while we continue to move our way up. Bada bang. <laughs> We got the frame rock in for that waterfall. I'm gonna start placing some plants out. These guys are gonna finish up edges and basically working their way up to us. These plants today came to us from Midwest Ground Covers and Doty Nursery. They're local, they grow fantastic plant material. Very, very shade heavy plant palette. We've got a paper bark maple here, thread leaf maple. We've got some one step soil conditioner to throw in as we're planting around this stuff to really ensure the health and livelihood of these plants. But some of you plant nerds out there will already know this stuff. We've got some Jack Frost Bernera. 
We got some Hakuna Klo, which is the Japanese sedge. This is, uh, I think it's Oriola. Allium, which can tolerate a fair amount of shade. Uh, it also likes full sun. Creeping Jenny, a few flats of Pachysandra to go underneath. This honey locust here. We've got a bunch of hostas. We've got some astilbe, and we've got some quick fire hydrangeas back here. So I'm gonna start placing some of these out so that we can keep moving and getting them planted. Plants are here. Things are going relatively smoothly, so. Home stretch right now, plants are continuing to go in. You can see the guys are starting to finish up the landscape. Plants are on the back side of that upper pooling area with the urn. We're gonna put in a couple more retaining stones down and through here just to help hold back some of that dirt. I am super pumped about the progress that we've made, A, but B, more importantly, the finished product and how it's really starting to come together. I love when the plants and everything are going in. It just ties everything back together, gets that construction site look out of there, and that work of art um, really bringing it to life. So really, really excited about this step in the project. What do you think, Nicholas? Why don't you, why don't you give us a little walkthrough here, buddy? Wow! <laughs> nice walkthrough. Yeah. The cool part about this is like all this rock looks super natural to the area because we're right by Star Rock, um, Illinois, which is a state park. Sandstone is a very prominent stone found in this part. So, I mean, it's a natural fit for the area. It's a natural fit for the house. We're just trying to, um, you know, recreate Mother Nature. And uh, I would say we're second only to Mother Nature if you look at this thing. Yep. Wow. This gorgy. I love it. Turned out incredible. The plants pulled it all together. It just looks absolutely incredible. We've got a nice little foreground of Pachysandra mixed in with some big hostas. Just, I love the way the waterfalls cut back and forth. You'll notice that we did squeeze some plants in along the side. That's a super important design technique that, that we do and we try and teach other contractors and homeowners to do, is just get that softscape in between any kind of staircase or concrete or wood stone steps, whatever they are. It's just really important to soften all this stuff up in through here so it just doesn't look really, really rocky. You can see a sphere up on top, starts everything off. The great thing about that sphere is not only can they see it from their bedroom windows, which are right there, their great room windows, which are right there, their front entry, which is right there, but also their deck up here. And we don't need a sizable berm to retain anything up there. So our it, we have instant height, but just look at the waterfalls. This is just incredible. It looks as if the sphere feeds the entire waterfall. We got that kind of big sheet style fall there. We got some really, really neat white water that's generated by that. And you can see it just flowing over these rocks. Love how it twists and turns. I love this waterfall. Just looks incredible. This rock is really neat because the water just barely comes up across the top crest and then comes back around this little hump right here, which is actually out of water. This is a really neat effect. Birds are gonna love it. And of course, this is the bottom fall where everything flows down into the reservoir, which is underneath. These bricks, you can see the aqua block right there, which we've got exposed so that we can kind of just see water as it's, as it's rising in the reservoir to make sure that we know it's full. And then we'll end up covering all this back up with gravel. Pump vault's located down there. You don't even know it's there because it's so well hidden. It just looks absolutely incredible. Oh. 